to do today is more, um, more, more or less just kind of go over um, go over a certain point of view on a lot on, on, on an abstract point of view. Well, let me I'll, I'll go over what, what, what physicists really call canonical quantization. So what I've been presenting in some sense is a, uh, uh, a certain specific point of view on canonical quantization in terms of Lie algebras and representation theory. And, and so I wanna just kind of go summarize that, that today and go over how, how that works and then say a little bit about what we'll do in the rest of the semester. And then um, starting next next week, we'll, we'll get to um, completely new material and start, um, it'll be about kind of fermionic variables and get to Clifford algebras and spinners and some of the geometry of, of, of spinners. Okay. Okay, so let's start. So the, um, okay, so this is really, so, 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 so the topic for today is really, it'll, should be thought of as being what is canonical quantization. And the, 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 the whole point of canonical quantization is to kind of fairly tightly relate the quantum theory to the, um, to, to the classical theory, to, to the Hamilton, to Hamiltonian mechanics. So the story starts out with Hamilton, Hamiltonian mechanics And you should think of, of, of that is that the, the arena there is it's really a um, it's really a, a, a phase space and so the crucial thing is a phase space M and um, for, so, so we're working with this just as a even dimensional real vector space but there's kind of a, an important um, Kind of a more abstract point of view about it, which we'll use as we go on, which is that, that this can this could be identified that the points of the phase space, almost by definition in, in Hamiltonian mechanics, are really the same thing as um, when I say it is is there the space of solutions solves to some equation of motion. So in some sense, this is the whole idea of Hamiltonian mechanics, that what you're doing is you're thinking about the, the space of, uh, you, you're starting with some equation of motion and you're putting it in Hamiltonian form, which means that you're kind of, you've taken some, you, you, you've really identified that the, the, the space of solutions, the equation of motion as your phase space. And that, um, when you put it in a Hamiltonian form, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're putting it in kind of a, the, the form of a um, first degree, um, anyway, of a first degree, uh, you're putting it in, in the form of Hamilton's equations. And so, so, so this can be identified with the space of, um, I want to call it the, uh, the, the po a possible initial. Oh, initial data. So one, one thing, one thing abstractly is when you're thinking about a phase space, you might want to think about what that what you really have is that each point in the phase space, each P and Q, is actually um, the initial data for some solution to, to an equation of motion. And it, it's kind of so so your P and the P's and Q's here are just the values at zero of the Q of the, of the Q and P variables, and they're gonna depend upon time according to some some, some equation of motion. Okay, now this, this thing naturally comes with, um, okay, and so if you do this in great generality, this, this doesn't even necessarily have to be a linear space, but what we're gonna, but the, in, in simple cases, the cases we're interested in, this is, so, so for us, uh, M is just gonna be R to N, and and, 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 and we're going to take coordinates, we're going to break the coordinates up into, let's say, QJ, PJ, where J is one up to N. And then this, this kind of structure, it turns out, um, mm -hmm. you, can, you, can, you can find, uh, I mean, there, there are various ways of, of showing that this is, that you can get a, uh, that, 
that when you've got a, a, a problem like this, you're gonna you're gonna also have a um, ha, have a have a Poisson bracket, but we're just gonna just by fiat define a define a Poisson bracket and assume that these uh, these um, coordinates are, are chosen to so so that the, the Poisson bracket has you know is is in this canonical form and and satisfies and, and, and does this. So we have a Poisson bracket. So it comes with a Poisson bracket, and the Poisson bracket is, is set up so that on that it it be satisfies Q J P K is delta J K. And so these are called kind of canonical coordinates because they're ones in which the Poisson bracket take, takes the simple takes the simple form. And then, so this is the Poisson bracket on, you know, on these um, on these coordinates, which are linear functions on phase space. But they're um, but but you, then you can extend this Poisson bracket to um, you know at least to polynomial functions or to any functions on on, on phase space by. Um, Anyway, by 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 saying that it's, it's got to be anti it's got to be anti symmetric and it's got to um, uh, obey kind of a, a Leibniz's rule for multiple for multiplication. Anyway, so that's the but but what you've got here is the um, okay maybe the, maybe now so, so so this is a standard story that's in all physics textbooks that that do that do Hamiltonian mechanics. But what you what you have is that you actually it turns out you actually have a linear the so so the dual so I'm going to often write m is an m star so the, the space of linear functions on on the phase space this has basis so, so the, these guys so you can th you can think of these guys as coordinates on M or as basis elements of the, of the dual. And then what, what happens, what, what you, you get a, um, so, so the Poisson bracket means, means that the M, it, if you take this dual and you add R, so, so you, you, you add an extra coordinate um, and, and you think of the space as being the, um, the basis, having a basis QJ, PJ, and one. So, so it, it's linear functions on M. So it's you know all linear functions, including um, constants on M. Linear functions. I should better, maybe better to say plus constants on M. Yeah. So, 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 so the point is, this is a Lie algebra. As a Lie algebra uh, with this guy, the, the Lie bracket. Okay. So this is a, a Lie algebra of dimension two n plus one, and the only um, so you can think of the so the, this Lie, the Poisson bracket tells you what the Lie bracket is on basis elements of here. And it's basically it, it, it's zero. It's, it's kind of always zero, except when you, when you have a Q J and a P J that P J that match. So it's it's a very close to being a an abelian Lie algebra or a trivial Lie algebra, except it has this. It, it has a certain some non some non trivial relations which relate this guy, this guy, this guy bracket of this guy gives you this guy. Okay, so so anyway, th this is this is a, and, and, and anyway, in, in general, it's also true that the the, the Poisson bracket gives you a Lie bracket on the whole infinite dimensional algebra of functions on 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 M. But if you restrict it to these these linear functions plus constants, you get the you get the, this this Lie algebra, and it's called the Heisen, called the Heisenberg Lie algebra. And so this is Lee, the Lee algebra of the what I call the Heisenberg group. To it. Okay, so at, th at this point, this is just kind of a, a peculiar, um, a peculiar take on uh, Hamiltonian mechanics. That it's, I'm, I, I'm trying to identify this infinite dimensional Lie algebra and, and this and this two n plus one dimensional 
special special sub the sub algebra, which is not something and, and this this thing is not something you would normally think much about in when you're doing classical mechanics. Okay, but then now quantization. So now if we want to do want to do quantum mechanics, so that's this one. So what is, from this point of view, what is quantization? Well, quantization is just, I, maybe I should, yeah, better just say, yeah, again, canonical. What, what it is, what, what it basically says is that there's, there, there exists a, um, there exists a unique a a uh, a unique so so up to unitary equivalence of unitary unitary on um, on of what let's call it. I um, H of this Lie algebra given by and so so you want to you want a bunch of operators for each basis element in Lie algebra you want to find an operator and you want to find a space it's acting on and what you just do is you just take um, yeah so well let, let me just Anyway, this 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 is so there's a, it's actually a representation of the group given on the Lie algebra by pi pi of q j is minus i q j q j Okay, so 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 here one is just the, so here these are just functions on the phase space, the coordinate functions and, and the constant function one. Here these are operators. This is just the identity operator, and so so you have to then you, you then have some choice as to how you how you realize these these operators, and so. Um, So this, so so you can um. Anyway, but but it, we so 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 the standard kind of story about quantization again that's in any physics textbook where you find you you, you create you, you create these Q and P operators is exactly um, what this says is that the, so 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 then the Heisenberg commutation relation. Uh, which are QJ PK is minus I or I um, times the identity operator, and if, if you said if, if H bar isn't equal to one, you may you may have an, you may have an H bar will, a scaling up H bar will appear in here. So 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 so, so th these are. The relation. If you re-express these guys, what these guys say is that the uh, um, is, is that pi prime is a Lie algebra homomorphism. Pi, uh, pi prime is a representation. So these are equivalent to saying that pi prime is a representation. Ooh. Yeah. So, 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 so this, this. Anyway, so, so this is just saying that the bracket, the bracket of these two guys would be this guy, um, I, on the Lie algebra side, and then on the operator side, the commutator of this guy and this guy will be this guy. And we've put them. Um, and you have to keep put the, the, the eyes are, are put here really just to kind of relate from the um, from the mathematics point of view. What's really if you have a Lie algebra unitary representation, what's natural is to have a, um, 
it's given by some skew adjoint operator. And so in, in physics, what's natural is to, to work with self adjoint operators that have um, real eigenvalues. And so you multiply it to multiply by minus multiply by minus i to, to relate the convention of skew adjoint to the self adjoint convention. And that's anyway, and that, yeah. And that's what anyway, and then, then you end up with an I here, but not one in the um, in the in, in the plus all bracket relation. Well, quick question. Yeah. Uh, is there a delta JK in that permutation relation? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. yeah, and I'm not writing down well like, actually here it's obvious that the well yeah, yeah, I'm not writing down yeah, exactly that this one tells you that the Q and I'm also not writing down that the QJ is all commute and the PJ is all commute. Not, not telling you that. Okay. okay. Anyway, so so this is kind of, in, 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 in some sense, this is what what Dirac was kind of realized realized when he first realized that there was some when he first heard about Heisenberg commutation relation and then said, "Wait a minute, that looks to me like a Poisson bracket." So so this is kind of what his 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 basic insight insight that was kind of expressed in, in this in this in this mathematical language. Okay, um, and then, and again, so so I'm writing this just in terms of operators. You then have to you, you then have to actually construct out. You actually have to construct a a, um, you know, a vector space with an inner product such that these guys act on it with these commutation relations. And you know, there and it turns out there are various ways of doing it, but they're all related by unitary transformations. So you can take, for instance. You know, Q this tack just by multiplication by. You can take this tack on functions of Q in the usual way, or on functions of P, and then Fourier transform is a unitary relation between the two pic the two pictures. Okay, okay. So that's that's part of the story. Then there's a, a variant of it which we got to at the end last time, which is turned out. So, 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 so this thing works very nicely for the um, for the free particle problem, but the for, for the harmonic oscillator, it turns out there's a there's a different slightly there's, there's a variant of this. And which, which, which turns out to be really important for the harmonic oscillator and for it's going to be very important in quantum field theory, which is basically, where you've got an infinite number of harmonic oscillators. And so the variant is that you complexify so, so, so take M, or, or let's just do it in terms of the dual, and take, and this is a real vector space, let's make it a complex vector space by allowing, instead of taking real combinations of the um, basis elements, QJ and PJ and one, and QJ and PJ. Let's take um, co allow complex um, um, complex linear combinations, and in particular, then you define as you take as your basis elements. You take ZJ as so what is one over one over square root of two QJ minus I PJ, and then and Z bar. Yeah, just the, And then, then what you do is you um, let's see. And now, now the plus, so the Poisson bracket extends, in a, you know, complex linearly to this complexification, and on these basis elements, it's um, I think it z z bar yes, sine right is a it's a i. So again, I mean, from from the point of view of classical, so this is still kind of classical mechanics. I've just I've just decided to complexify my phase space for no obvious reason, and then introduce new complex coordinates, and then the plus and, and, and take this as my Poisson bracket relation. Um, but now, what you can this this actually becomes interesting. The interest of this is that you can then is that when you quantize, you what you get is you get I. This, this this the same representation now expre expressed okay. and, and so, so, so this is the, the one thing about Lie algebra representation remember 
a Lyot representation, pi prime, is something that takes an element of this real vector space and gives you operators. Now, if you complexify, you can, you, you can instead take complex linear combinations and then just use the complex linear combination of the operators. And so it, it's kind of, a, it's, it's a linear, pi prime is kind of a linear thing. So it, there's no problem going from, you know, uh, extending it from real things to complex things. The only thing the only thing to watch out for is when you extend it to, if you allow complex linear combinations of your operators, they're no they're they're no longer in general going to be unitary. It's only certain. It's only the real linear combinations of this will be which will be the unitary or the skew adjoint ones. And if you've allowed yourself to throw in complex numbers, you you get some bigger thing which were only a real a real we're only the real the ones where the, where where the coefficients are real is it unitary but anyway what so what so that's this is now it's the same story as before except, except extended to here and you get what you find is that um you you can you, if you define pi prime of z j to be again put it in a minus i and then call this a let's see if this is going to be a dagger j dagger and this guy, J, and then one minus i times one, same thing. Then the the, um, the Heisenberg commutation relations then become that a j a j dagger is so make make sorry k is delta j okay. again times the identity operator. And, and that now, now I'm getting rid of the, of the H bar. Okay, and so, 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 so these, these are often, also sometimes often called the canonical. Sometimes you'll see these referred to as the, as the CCR, the canonical commutation relations. But, but the, they're, they're really just the Heisenberg commutation relations kind of rewritten on these um, complex, with these complex linear combinations, these things. Okay. Um, okay, but now the, the new thing that you can do here is that you, you actually can get a new, um, a new kind of construction of the Hilbert space that you can get, I mean, any kind of, Thing that you get that satisfies this is going to be a Lie algebra representation of the of the Heisenberg Lie algebra, but now it's going to be a Lie algebra representation of the complexified. So so so, so this is a um, so these give so these give a rep of V of H two n plus one, but you have to again com complexify. So it's remember Lie algebras by in general when we're given Lie algebras they're real they're given their real vector spaces and but if you, so if you start taking um, complex linear combinations of them you're gonna which is what you're doing here when you're here is you're getting now you're you you've got to complexify the algebra. Okay, so so now the new the, the new thing here that this that this allows is this allows you um. Okay, so 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 so, so this get, this allows allows a new construction of, of H and 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 the and the and, 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 and the operators. There's I. So in, instead of taking functions of Q or functions of P, what we can do is you can take H to be um, uh, well, the, the, the simplest way of thinking about it is just to take, is just think of it as po polynomials in Z, and, um, and, and and then what you can do, and then take a a is then multiplication by Z, and a dagger is D easy. And so, 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 so this is what I call the the Bargman Fock. But the 
of the, the Bargman Falk representation, or maybe a, a little bit, a, I mean, maybe may, a bit more sophisticated way of thinking about this is, is to think of H as, as not be just polynomials in Z, but to be kind of any holomorphic function of Z. So it's a holomorphic function on, okay, and, and, and here I, I've actually gone to, to make things simpler. Now I'm just talking about the case of N is equal to one. But you, you can look at holomorphic functions if you know what those are on, on the plane. And you have to then, there is a story that I explained about, you have to then think about how, what the right um, uh, inner product is to put on to put on these guys. And so the, the bargain fog, what bargain fog realized was, was that there was an inner product that made um, these guys adjoints of each other. And that gave, and it made, and it gave you a unitary representation, a, represent, a unitary representation of the, um, Heisenberg Lie algebra, you know, at least on the real subspace here, it was unitary. So that's what we did last time. Um, okay. And now maybe, I want to see, so let me, let me do this. Let me just say how much I want to tell you about this. I guess let me let me say say a bit about why this is why this is going to be really useful. So this note note. So this this allows allows a simple treatment. Of, of, of the symmetry um, z to the e to the i theta z of the uh, w w and, and this is the, the fundamental symmetry of the um, symmetry of, of the harmonic oscillator problem. So I'll, I guess we'll see, say more, we'll, we'll see a lot about this as, as we go on, but, but the, 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 the fundamental reason that, you know, that this, this construction is really important is that if you only had functions of Q, if you only had a realization in terms of functions of Q or a realization in terms of functions of P, then um, symmetries like this, where what's happening is, is that th this, this symmetry is mixing P's and Q's. This is a symmetry which you only see on phase space, you don't see it on configuration space. And so uh, asymmetries like this, um, that they're actually, yeah, anyway, these kind of phase space methods and this bargman fock method are really kind of ideally uh, designed to, 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 make, you know, to implement these kinds of symmetries. And these are exactly, these are the kind of crucial symmetries you get, you see in quantum field theories. So um, this, is, this is why Anyway, one reason we're doing this, but you can certainly see this even at the level of just solving the, the one-dimensional harmonic oscillator. That you know, solving it in terms using A and A dagger and its properties is you know has it has a lot of nice properties rather than trying to solve a, a differential equation in terms of Q or a differential equation in terms of T. Um, can I quickly ask what yeah. physical symmetry is this symmetry, or does it have any physical symmetry? Well, this is actually the. I mean. It, it, it's not a spatial symmetry. It's not something you see in terms of. Um, but 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 I mean, one way of saying it is that it's the. I mean, the, the corresponding generator of this symmetry is the Hamiltonian. Okay, so it's the. This is why. So this is why you know understanding a symmetry completely solves solves the problem. That the uh, the energy eigenstates are, you know, are are are, are just the the. Representation, the, the unitary, the representations are just representations of the symmetry. They're all one-dimensional, labeled by integers. Um, so it's you know, a lot of ways of say, saying saying this, but it, but it, it, it's it's a symmetry you 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 can't see in um yeah I mean you, you can't see it if you just think in, in configuration space, but it is. 
I mean, I, I mean, I, I, in, in some sense, the Hamiltonian is the moment map for the symmetry. So it, it's the, you know, yeah, it, it, it's the thing that generates this. And, and if you just look at, and if you look at the trajectories in phase space, not, not in, if you look at configuration space, a harmonic oscillator is doing this. If you look in phase space, it's going around in circles. So in some sense, it's just, you know, I mean, in, in the, the trajectories in, in, in phase space are, you know, are, 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 just, are just simple cir circular motion. It, it's just, it's the symmetry of that circle. So I don't know if that helps. Um, so is that the same as like just the time translation symmetry that gives rise to energy conservation? Well, it, it, it turns out, so, so, so that it, it's, it, it's the symmetry, it, it's the symmetry of rotation about that circle and face. So, so your, your trajectory is, if you, if you start some point in phase space, so you think of a point of phase space as an initial value. And you ask, well, what's the trajectory look like? Well, it's going to look like this, right? And so the, um, so these trajectories, so, so it's true there's, so the, Ham the Hamiltonian always is the thing which, tell which tells you, you know, it, it's the symmetry of, of translating along the time evolution, okay? And, and this, this symmetry here in phase space is the symmetry of, ro of, of, it's the rotational, it's just the rotational symmetry in the plane. And they're the, they are the same thing in this case, in the case of the harmonic oscillator, you know? So, you know, moving, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, the way you're moving, you're just moving by a constant angular, um, yeah, you know, with, with, with a constant angular velocity, and that's so, 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 so it's the same. Then. Anyway, that that's yeah, it's, it is the same symmetry. Okay, okay. Anything else about this? Okay, maybe a couple more comments about this. Um, okay, maybe just just to say a, a little, to say a, a little bit about. This, and there, there's a lot more detail about this in the um, in the part of the notes I'm, I'm, I'm skipping over. But let me just kind of say a bit here. Okay, so so in the um, so note, so, so using. Using QP coordinates, you know, Q, J, P, J coordinates. Let's just coordinates. Coordinates. Yeah, so you you have you have a choice. So so H. Um. So 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 you said, what do you do? So 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 the big difference between quantum mechanics and classical mechanics is really that you're you you can describe your states as functions on phase space, but in, in the in quantum mechanics, there are functions of only half the variables. So in um, subset states in classical mechanics, the, 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 you can, you, you, they can be localized anywhere in Q and P space, but in it, it, you can't localize in Q and P space in quantum mechanics because it, 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 they can only be functions of half the variables. So they can be functions of Functions of, of the QJ, or 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 the or the functions of the PJ, and and the, the, the crucial thing, it turns out you know, that you, you can also mix these things. You, you I mean if you wanted to clearly, you could take functions of you know one of the QJs and then the rest of the for the other values of J take a function of P. I mean you can mix and match if you felt like it, and what what's it turns out what's crucial is that you, you take a, a function of n variables that satisfies that, that, that so called Poisson commute. Is, is you use the fact that, the, that all of these guys um, have zero Poisson, Poisson brackets with each other, and all of these guys have zero zero. So what you what it, it, the, the the general statement is that is that you can you 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 can use any coordinates that you want on phase space as long as there there's there's n of them so there's half the total dimension of phase space 
and and, and they and the, and the, and the and they're and the nearly independent ones, and they plus on commute. As long as and they and they, they commute with each other, and, and the, they have Libra bracket zero with each other. So that's a plus one bracket zero with each other. So that's the. And, and, and anyway, j j just to, to give you some some terminology, these are um, so we, subspaces of the um, su subspaces of the phase space that are half the total dimension, and where all the coordinates um, have plus one bracket zero on them are called Lagrangian. So these are are called Lagrangian submanifolds. A Lagrangian in subspaces. So, so that's basically a Lagrangian subspace is kind of a half dimensional subspace of, of, of a phase space on which, which where you can, where the coordinates all, all have plus on bracket zero. And, and then, so the, the general abstract nonsense is that this kind of thing, you can actually create a, a version of, of, of H and of the Slay algebra representation by picking any Lagrangian subspace you feel like. Okay, now using um, Zj, Z bar J coordinates, you get a somewhat different, you, you get something similar. Then what, what you get is you get, um, so then H, so the way we've set it up, H is um, functions, Of ZJ, but it's pretty clear if you if you wanted to, you could just kind of complex conjugate the formalism and get and, and work with functions of um, and, and, and again these 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 satisfy you satisfy this relation. Um, you could also do it with um, You could do that. You could, you, could, you, could, you, could, you could do this instead if you wanted. You could work with you could complex conjugate everything and uh, work, work with these guys. Um, and, and, and again, again, you have some, something something kind of similar. And so what's happening is that H is that here. What's happening is you're taking M, and you, and you're not looking for half dimensional real subspaces on which things uh, have Poisson bracket zero. Because what you're doing is, is you're complexifying, okay. And but on when you but on on these on the comp complexified phase space, what you're doing is you're looking at a you're you're decomposing this into two pieces. You're decomposing it into a um, well, I think it uh, let, let, it, it's going to be a C, Cn plus Cn. So and, and this has a base with the basis. Um, ZJ and a basis in bar J. Okay. So, I mean, you, you may have noticed that at some point what I did, at some point I made some very, very specific choice where, where I, I said that, you know, ZJ is one of a square root of two, um, QJ minus, minus IPJ. Anyway, so I, I made a, a very spe I took a very specific linear combination of the Q's and P's, to make my Z's. But I, I could have taken other linear combinations of the Q's and P's. But the um, but but what so so what happens in in this? This is this is what's called a real polarization. This is something called a complex polarization. But 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 the fundamental thing that's happening here is that the um, you're complexifying the phase space, and then you're you're breaking this. Two n dimensional real. So this is two n dimensional real. You complexify it, it's two n dimensional complex, and you're breaking it into two um, com complex n dimensional subspaces that are related by, um, and, and, and there's that are related by complex conjugation. Okay. And, 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 and you need, to, and there, there's some analog of. There's, there's some analog of the property of that these and anyway and you and then also it um it's also adapted to the Poisson bracket that these guys Poisson commute and these guys Poisson commute. So there's a, a, a lot of stuff I may come back to later about you know the, this idea of what there's the general idea of what's a, what's a called a, what's a complex structure 
and what's a complex polarization. But but here, it, but the basic idea is that the 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 analog of breaking up into these these possibilities in in the real case once you've complexified it's 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 a breaking up into a complex thing and its conjugate and um and 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 there and there's a so the this, the story of how you take an ori an originally real vector space and end up with two complex that two complex things which are conjugate of each other is what's the, called the story of a complex structure. You're, you're, it's called putting a complex structure on this guy. And that's, that's what you're doing. But there's, so there's a lot more about it in the notes. And, and as we go along, I may, I may come, back, can come back to that. But this is what you're, you're seeing here. Okay, any questions like this? Uh, so, so do you really need to require that like QK uh, and QK, they're open for I can be zero, but you can have, so can you like take a function like QJ and the, and the QK, uh, open brackets if you a QL, which is also in the, you know, in the space generated by the group? Um, well, you need like, plus. Like my example would be the function generated by, uh, like, no. like, I have to think, yeah, so you're right, but, but that, that's just a sub. I think you need, well, I mean, if you change basis, I, mean, I think it really has to be, to be zero, yeah, I mean, you, you need, so, 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 so this, this Poisson bracket is a, um, this Poisson bracket is an anti-symmetric bilinear form. And, and you're basically saying that that anti-symmetric bilinear form restricted to this subspace is zero, is zero. Okay. And it's the zero one. So I, I don't think that that's all right. I think that's not, I have to think about it, but I think it's not right. It, 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 it's not just that you need to, to break this, these things up into two subalgebras. It's not just that. It's it's that um, but yeah, you need that. No. But um, but I'm not sure. I mean, but but that would be, yeah. And, and anyway, I'm, not, I'm I, I I I think that, that that's that's correct. You just you you really need, you really need your Poisson bracket restricted to this the sub the subspace to be zero. Okay, okay. So 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 this is kind of this is the whole story about the basically this is. This is the story about the Heisenberg, the algebra of the Heisenberg group and ba the basic story of canonical quantization. Now, the next part of the story has to do with the, um, the, the symplectic group, which in, there, there's, there's various, various ways of getting at. But maybe one, one way to say, to say it is this, is the, um, so, the, so we're going to talk about the, something called the symplectic group. And maybe, maybe this is also a good point. I think Gian was asking me about this at some point of a break, is, what, is to watch out. So I've called, it, I've called this SP of NR. OK. And, or, or, oh, and it's actually two, 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 two even dimensional. It's, it's, a, it's an even dimensional, but but what, watch out this this group. So sometimes you'll you'll also see um, people talk about a group S P of N. Okay, so th th this group is kind of a non-compact group. This group is a this group is kind of the group of of um, unit of, of of kind of of kind of unit of, of unit uh, n-dimensional quaternions in some sense, and it's kind of the it's kind of well, let's, I, maybe it's the n by n quaternion, invertible quaternionic matrices is a bit better way to say it. And the, po the point is, that, so the, 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 these these are not equal. But, but, but what it, what is true is that if you um, if you if, if, if you if you take the take the Lie algebra, take the Lie algebra, and complexify and complexify, then you get the same thing. So, so, so at the level of the algebras, these are things which um, 
are, are not the same. They're not the same. They're really as really algebra. They're not the same. But if you complexify, they're the same really algebra. And which I, I would sometimes call this the Lie algebra of SP uh, and two NC. Okay, I mean, th this is a somewhat useless fact, and I'm just telling you in case you've seen this guy and you're and you're you're wondering, you know, wait a minute, this this guy doesn't seem to be like this guy. Well, they're different. This this is a compact Lie group, and and and, it, and 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 which is best thought of in terms of quaternions. That's the easiest way to see it. This is a, a non-compact Lie group, which goes off to infinity, which has has very different properties than this guy. Yeah, I am. Wait, what? Spin, or spin. This has nothing to do with spin. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so and none of these are spin. So, so the, the, the only real. <laughs> I, I, again, I also know the you know, the, the only relation to spin is that sp one is spin of three, and sp two is spin of five. <laughs> but but, but, but th th these are just completely obscure random facts which come about because in low dimensions. But uh, other than that, there's no, you know, in, in, in general, except for these special things, there's no relation between spin groups and SP groups. And, and, and we'll see more about the spin group. So, so one thing I want to get to a little bit um, later one of the main thing, main goals of, of the um, first part of this class would be get, to get to explaining what these uh, to, to constructing these guys and, and 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 telling you what these what these how to construct these spin groups in general. And you'll see that they're they're well they actually have no anyway they, 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 these are not the same things as these guys. Okay, okay. So now, but 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 we're but let me get rid of. Everything here because this is I'm, I'm interested really in just this guy. Okay, so one way of understanding what this abstract, more a little bit abstracted, what this group is is in some sense it's the it's the symmetry group of the of the Poisson bracket that in the um just as when you have a a um you know a non, a, a real it, it, you know pot, a standard time linear product. Its symmetry group is the orthogonal group ON. Well, here we have kind of an anti-symmetric bilinear form on R2N. Its symmetry group is this guy. And so, in other words, so this is the guy who's, um, it's, it's the, uh, you can think of him as the, the linear transformations. Transformations of uh, um, R2N. And such that, uh, let's think of R2N, we're thinking of it as, as, as this dual of the, of the um, phase space, such that uh, um, G, linear transformation is G, such that G acting on some V and set some. Some, 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 some linear function on phase space and G acting on some other linear function on phase space um, is just the same thing as V and W. Okay, so, so it's it's the anyway. So it, 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 it's the linear symmetries of this linearization of the, of the linear part of the Poisson bracket on linear things. Okay. And and in particular, I showed um, that we had for that for n is equal to one. One, you had SP two R is this is, is the same thing as SL two R. So it there is a way of identifying with it it, it with um, two by two invertible real matrices with um, determinant one. You can you can invert you can identify it with that, but 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 not um you know but but but, but SP but for n is n, n greater than one. It, it, it's um, not related, not the same as you know as S L K R. Yeah, so it, 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 so 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 this this property that it, it's 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 something 
kind of easier to get your hands on, just two by two real matrices with determinant one is kind of special to n is equal to one. Once you get n greater than one, it, 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 they, they really are new objects. They're really completely new objects you've never seen. Okay, and then the, um, okay, now the, the, the other, so, so the, one of the interesting things about this is that you can, you can take, you can, you can you, it's Lie algebra, R is, uh, has, it has the basis. Yeah, well, it, it, it really is, is just the homogeneous, homogeneous quadratic. On M. Okay, so so there's there's a basis, yeah, you know, like QJ, QK, PJ, QK, and QJ, PJ. So it's just all all quadratic things in in, in, in the um in the, in the coordinates on M. And and this is this is and and it. And, and, and this, these things make form a Lie algebra because if you take one of these a quadratic thing like this, and you take another quadratic thing like this, that if just from the properties of the Lie, of the Lie bracket, it's going to give you you're going to get something you're going to get something quadratic. So it's going to it's going to take Lie bracket of two quadrat of two things of degree two has to be a degree two, and that's just from the the way the way the degrees work in the Poisson bracket. Okay, and then the um. Okay, then now now you can you 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 can play the same trick. As P, Q, and R, you can play the same trick as in Bargman Fock, and you can complexify. So you 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 can complexify this Lie algebra, and then you're going to get complex. So. Complex combinations of of these um, z j z k a z bar k anyway and the um. Okay. And so, 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 so then there, there, there's, there's a, actually a very interesting story then about how this, um, how this choice of complex structure, how you divided things up into Z's and Z bars, how it interacts, it interacts with this guy. And, that, that, and that's a lot of what the theme of what that chapter I'm skipping is about, is about that, which is a somewhat obscure topic. But anyway, that's, that, that, that's what a lot of what's going on in there. Okay. Let's see how we. Okay, so now the. Um, okay, so, so so now what is what happens when we do what is. Now now we can we can extend we can we can extend canonical quantization to in, in, instead of just having a a representation of the um, a representation of the linear functions of Q's and P's we can turn it into a. A representation of, of, of this Lie algebra, and then and, and just by taking we can get a some canonical quantization it can be extended extended to this case by by taking um QJ. So now. You can get a representation, the algebra representation of QJ, QK to be equal to minus I, QJ, QK, and pi prime of PJ, PK, it's minus I. Okay. But then the only, th the only thing we have to, what you have to watch out is, is what you're going to do with QJ, PK. PK, and, so, and sorry, I guess I should, I guess that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so so this, this is going to be, um, uh -oh. 
Well, actually, let me uh, anyway, minus I, and then I, I, I guess I, this will work out. I, what I have to what I have to do is I have to take QJ PK, but then I also have to synthesize this good because the problem is that um, if J is equal to K, these commute, and it doesn't matter which order I write. If J is not equal to K, it doesn't matter. I they, they commute, it doesn't matter which one I use. But if K is equal to J, I have to I have to I have to make this choice. Okay. I'm sorry, there's a half here. And then then this gives a um, so you get uh, a representation. A uh, rep of the sp to n r on um, on, on on h. Okay, so 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 this thing that you, that you, you, you were constructing this representation of the um, of the Heisenberg lead algebra, but it actually extends to a representation of this bigger thing. So really, what you're doing is is, is you're actually getting a um, Okay. Okay. Now, so I think I better say, say the rest of this a little bit quickly. Um, you're going to get by th 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 this. This this gives you a representation of the algebra. But there, there, there's something a little bit funny about about this representation, and it comes from the from what you've done here. What you've done here, if you if you this this corresponds to when you look at the uh, the theory of the harmonic oscillator that the lowest energy eigenvalue has, it doesn't have energy zero, it has energy a half. Well, there's there's this funny a half, which is kind of where things that should be integers all now have these halves in them. And this 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 this, this corresponds to the same phenomenon that you had in the orthogonal group where the, um, the Lie algebra of SO3, yeah, that, that you, um, well, it, it, if you, there were some representations like the spin representation that if you that they were they were nice representations of the algebra of SO3, but if you tried to um, to turn them into representations of the group, you had this there there's this ambiguity in terms of uh, by a sign. And here there's gonna be a similar ambiguity in a sign caused by the fact that you've got half integers, not integers. And the um and and, and plus a a a a, a, a representation of the double cover of SP to N R, which we'll call um, which is called which is called MP to N R, just the metaplectic group. So we're, this is something we'll we'll see it as we go on. We'll, I'll, I'll get into the details of this, but but there, there's there's this kind of funny analog. There's there's all sorts of funny analogs between the spin case and the orthogonal group, and then the sp case and the and and the um, and the symplectic group, and the, the you you see the same problem with with this double covering problem with with representations only defined up to minus signs that kind of halves appearing where they're supposed to be integers. And you, you see this here. So the, um, but anyway, but, but what, what, what this literally gives you at the Lie algebra representation, it gives you a perfectly nice Lie algebra representation on here. But it, um, if you try and turn it into a, a representation of the group, you try and exponentiate it, you get the same problem you would get in the spin case. You, you have to go to the double cover to get a, to get a, and, 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 the, the, and this double cover is, is, is a much trickier one to, to get your hands on, he, it, you, this, this is actually an example of a group that can't be written in terms of matrices. So it's a. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see more about that later. Okay, and what else do I want to tell you about? So then, then the other, the, the the other point of view here is that what you can do is that you actually have. So it may be an abstract point of view. Is, is you have. A, Is, is, is you have a representation of the Heisenberg, the Heisen, you start out with the representation of the Heisenberg group, 
and then you, with, 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 when you extend it to this thing, you you extend it so that it's also a representation of the well of this double cover of the sympathetic group. And then, but then the point is that this guy, it, 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 it's not just the product here. It's the um, it, it's a it's a, a semi direct product because the point is that these the symplectic group is acting on at the level of the Lie algebra the symplectic group is acting on the, on the Lie algebra of this guy and you know if you think of it at the group level it's you can do it but I mean, this guy is acting by automorphisms on this guy and and this all comes down in, in the Lie algebra case to the fact that if you take a quadratic thing and you act on a linear thing you're going to get a linear thing okay so in terms of the in terms of kind of the differentiated action of this guy and this guy it's going to be the quadratic things acting on the linear things give you linear things okay so i'm getting so that that's that's kind of the abstract nonsense point of view of this what else do i want to tell you about Okay, so so now let me just kind of say a, a bit about um, a bit about how all this. Re so 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 this gives you a, a, a different point of view on on, on on how what what symmetries are than, than what you normally see in, in a physics class. So let me kind of explain the relations. So especially, I think a lot of you have seen this before. So. so maybe. Um, So, so the general idea about symmetry is so so so, let's, so there's something called the Lagrangian point of view, view, and so 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 this this is a different point of view on mechanics where you you say that the the equations of motion are given they're the Euler Lagrange equations. Um, for some action functional given by integrating some Lagrangian. Now, if you've got, um, so, so here, if you've got some group G acts on, 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 you know, on, on, on the configuration space, space, um, that the Lagrangian L is, is invariant, Invariant. Then what you've got this thing. You've got no there theorem. Which, which which basically said which basically gives for each um for, so it says that if you if you give me an element of the Lie algebra of G and this is happening, it's going to produce a uh, a function. Let's let, let, let a, 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 let's call it. A, What's going to call, call it f of um, q and, and p q and q and q dot. Let's say. Is that what I want? Well, let's say let's say it this way because we're, we're going to anyway. You and, and you you take and then you do, the other part of the story is that you you relate phase space and configuration space by something like this by taking the l the q dot. And I don't want to explain so much how that goes, but 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 you 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 hope that L is such that there's the velocity space of velocity is in the space of um, momenta. It has this nice relate this nice one to one relation. And then what? Let's let's call it F, call it F X F X. Okay. And so no, this theorem tells you that they're that, that these guys and that these guys have the um, you know, that the, 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 the Poisson bracket relations of these guys are are are, are, the, are the same as the relations of Li G. Okay. And and this and this guy has the has, has and, and and this guy, well, well so, 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 so it, it tells you two things. It tells you that this guy Poisson can be used for the Hamiltonian, so he's a conserved quantity. And it also tells you is that for the different X's, these guys have the Poisson bracket relations of the Lie algebra. Okay, and then what? Then what you do is you then say use canonical quantization. And, and then you get some some function x of the 
Qs and Ps, and, and, and the, these are, are your observable operators. So, and, and so for each, for each G, that's such that L is symmetric under G, you get, for each element of Lie algebra, you get these, you get, get, you get, you get these operators from kind of conical quantization, which are exactly the same, exactly the same ones we were talking about. So, so, so this is exactly, this ends up in the same place that we end up. If, when you've got a, a group that, that just acts on configuration space. Okay. And, 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 that, and that, um, yeah, yeah. But, um, but, 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 but it, we're, we're, we get more general, we get other, um, we, we, we get something in much something more general. So, operate, yeah, so operators for all x minus p. So we get so so for any symplectic transformation, I mean, because there's a lot of the, the symplectic transformations in general. The, these are 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 things that you kind of more general than what, what you're what you're seeing here. They don't they 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 in general can mix. So some of them will, will just be symmetries of the cues that, that just move the cues move the cues around. Some of them will mix cues and p's like the harmonic oscillator what we we're talking about. So, but, but this this is a much anyway you, you this this method gives you a lot more operators than things like this. But most most of them, but they you know most um, don't. Don't uh, commute. Don't commute with a Hamiltonian. In H. So what? What do you have? So 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 this is we're we're getting a lot more operators. And if you if you tell me us me what H is, I can tell you what those commutation relations with it with H are. In general, they're going to be non-trivial. And sometimes these are what um, physicists call these dynamical symmetries because they're things which don't. Necessarily commute with H, but they have an interesting relation to H. And um, whereas what Noether's theorem is going to give you is it's going to give you a, it's, going to, it's going to typically give you some, some of these guys, but in particular it's going to give you one, ones which ones which commute with H. And they're symmetries in the sense that they they commute with H. They leave energy eigenstates invariant. They give you conserved quantities and time, and and so so. But you're so you're getting something anyway. You're, you're coming from a, a very different point of view of mechanics about Lagrangians and about the, and getting your dynamics from a different principle. And um, anyway, but you're typically ending up with a more restrictive set of, um, set of operators or a more restrictive notion of what a symmetry really is. Okay, so then, the, then just maybe then the, the, the quick examples well, maybe let me not. Anyway, so so, so, the, so the examples you've already seen are, you know, if if you um, if you look at if you're in um, three dimensions and you look at rotations, they're they're things that just move the Qs and just move the Ps and don't mix them, and so you have a uh, rotations are SO three inside SP six R, and I think at various points you, you you've you've seen how 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 this work how the the Lie algebra of this guy corresponds to certain um, certain quadratic things in, in here, and then the other one was that the U one, but there's also this U one, the, the kind of two of the most interesting things to think about are this U, this this is the one for um, the harmonic oscillator. This is for rotations. This is this is for the this is kind of the one when we we're talking about the time evolution of harmonic oscillator. Okay, so I'm getting to the end, but that's pretty much that, that's basically that was basically the, 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 the review of last time. So, so so are there any kind of questions about this stuff? This is kind of the, yeah, yeah, the big story of, of, of the last semester I wanted to kind of put together. Yeah, I, I actually have a question. Yeah. Uh, so in the last step, uh, the SO3 subgroup of the symplectic group is 
transportation in uh, in QMP, but don't mix, but don't mix QMPs. Right. But the Yuan action actually mix. Right. Uh, mixes QMPs. Right. Yeah. Okay. See you. Thank you. Okay. Then maybe just take. Let me just take five minutes and, and say what we're going to do next time. What we're going to do this semester. So, so from this point of view, there's. What I want to do now breaks up naturally into maybe three parts. Actually, sorry. Yeah. About this, um, is is there a one-to-one -one relationship we could establish between uh, all the elements in V of G that commute with the Hamiltonian and all the elements that's generated by Noether's theorem, like the f of x u, which is erased? Well, no, well, Noether's theorem typically, I mean. The Noether's theorem, in, in, in some sense, it, it, it's in a different context. It's in this Lagrangian context. So the problem in in, in Noether's theorem, you're getting. I mean, the, the the problem is there's there's a complicated relation between the Lagrangian story and the Hamiltonian story. You may not be able to easily go back and forth, but um, yeah. but in, in this. The, the, the any, if it's just repackaging of the same information, like whether or not like. Just some symmetry. Either it could be packaged in the Lagrangian formula sum as the symmetry that's generated by the Noether's by Noether's theorem, uh, oh. or in the Hamiltonian formula sum, then it would just be what the disk uh, commute with the Hamiltonian. Well, I mean, okay. So, so I mean, the, 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 the this. This Hamil this Hamiltonian picture, the picture that the thing I'm doing definitely gives you um, it gives you symmetries in the sense of you know representations of some Lie group with corresponding you know operators corresponding to each element of Lie algebra which don't commute with the Hamiltonian. Okay, yeah, but it it also gives you and, and those that's an interesting story. It it also gives you cases of more standard kind of symmetries that that do commute with the Hamiltonian. And in, in, in most cases, those those are the same ones you would get from a no there's theorem argument. Okay. I mean, so so, so to me, the, the point is that the, the no there's theorem, actually, I shouldn't even I shouldn't even really say. Yeah, the part it, it's kind of tricky to, to say what the relationship is because because they, they had they're really two different ways of doing things and they have different strengths. I mean, for instance, the um The problem, one, one reason people really like the Noether's theorem method, and we'll get to this later, is that you, um, if you try and do something that's a relativistic theory where you've, you're trying to do space and time at the same time and you haven't broken out time in, as a special thing, then, you know, so, so you, you, can, you can ask, so, so, so Noether's theorem will give you yeah, I'm sorry, it's, it gets, it, it's a little bit complicated what you do. I mean, in, in the case, I think the only thing I do want to say is that in the, in the case, standard case of another theorem where there's, a, where there's a good, where there's a one-to-one -one relationship between with, with, with the, the velocity space and the phase space, and you, you, you have a, a league group that's acting just on configuration space, then that, that will correspond to um, that construction will give you the same operators you would get here. You, you, you would get it, 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 from, from, from this point of view, um, where, where, where again, where, where the Lie group is just acting um, separately in the configuration and, 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 and momentum spaces. And when you quantize, but, but yeah, I mean, you get to the same, you get to the same place for some things like, like the angular, you, you can get to the angular momentum operators either way. Okay. But there's, there's operators you can't get to this way, from the this way, which are like which the most important one is that U one that 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 U one symmetry, and and there's things that you could do in the uh, Lagrangian point of view which are much harder to do from this point of view, like, and, and especially in relativity you can you can t you can use the fact that your um your Lagrangian is invariant under boost transformations which mix space and time that doesn't really have a that's very hard to think about in the in the Hamiltonian point of view. Okay. But um, anyway, sorry, it, 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 it's it's kind of a long story. Unfortunately, I, there there isn't a kind of a simple, nice, beautiful story about how these things are related. It's a little bit tricky. 
Okay, so let me quickly tell you what I want to do. So I, I wanted to kind of break this up into three three parts. And one first part, in some sense, is going to be. You, you can think of everything that we've been doing now so far, everything I've been doing so far as a bosonic case. And I can think of that there's a, there's a corresponding fermionic case. Right. There's a cor corresponding fermionic story. And so here you're gonna, what's gonna, here you're gonna have um, coordinates QJ and PJ, which are commuting coordinates. Here you're gonna have coordinates uh, is it, uh, psi j, which are which are anti anti commuting, so these these are kind of you can think of kind of polynomials where whenever you move generators across each whenever you interchange two generators you pick up a minus sign. That's these guys, and then here you get um, well here 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 you get the Lie algebra Lie h of two n plus one, the Heisenberg Lie algebra. There's a corresponding thing here, but it's a, it, it, it's a little, it's not quite, it's not a Lie algebra. It also has anti, it also has anti-commutation relations. So there's a certain, a li, certain Lie super algebra. But then what happens here is you have O, um, S, S O, no, S, S, here you have SP two N, N R, and this corresponds to O, the SO of, of, of NR. The, the story here has to be even, there, things over here have to be even dimensional. Here, they, it turns out they don't have to be even dimensional. Uh, here, you've got the metaplectic double cover. Here, you've got the spin group R. And then, and then, then and so, so this is the Lie algebra is quadratic. So Lee SP of two NR is quadratic quadratic polys. Here again, it's the same thing. Lee of the spin of NR is quadratic okay. okay. And then the so 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 so, so these things um so Q, P, here you have these, these operators, Q, J, P, J. These are operators on an infinite dimensional space. Here you have, um, here you have what, are called, what are called gamma matrices. That the, the quantization of these guys is basically the, the gamma matrices. And, um, and, and the, these act on H as uh, you know, some infinite dimensional in functions here 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 h is, is the spinners and they're finite dimensional okay so what I, what I want to do spend some time doing the first part of the course is just to kind of tell start, t tell this whole story and then as you as you're learning this whole story I think it, it's it's fun to kind of compare it to, to everything you've learned about this story, that there's a one-to-one -one relationship between everything that's happening over here, what's happening over here. And, and in, in some sense, you're just here, you're start. I guess another way of saying it, here you're starting with this anti-symmetric guy here, and here you're starting with this, this symmetric inner product over here. And but, but it, it, this is a not, not well enough known, but a beautiful story. And, and once you master this, you, you, you know how to, um, I mean, you know, you know how to quantize theories of fermions, not just theories of bosons, which is um, and which anyway. And I think I think this whole this whole story makes this this whole subject a lot less kind of mystifying than it normally it normally is. Okay, and then and then there, there's another there, there, there's one then one kind of beautiful thing also is that you can also get to something you, you can get to. Um, it turns out that you can actually put these, you can put these together. So, you know, and, and, and this is what you get when you typically are looking not just at a, at the, the hill, at, at the state space of a scalar particle, but the state space of a, of a particle with spin, you're putting together a spinner, finite dimensional spinner wave function and a, 
and, and the scalar um, fu function of, of, of space, and you're putting them together into a tensor product, and then you've got not just the not just the not just these operators and these operators, but you've got kind of things that have one of these and one of these. And, and, and the main example of that would be like the Dirac operator. The Dirac operator is something that where you have to kind of work, take take this picture, put this picture, and put it together with this picture, and then you get um, something that's kind of got a, a product of one of these and one of these, and that's going to be the Dirac operator. Okay, so that's that's that story. Then then just very very quickly, then the next thing I want to do is. Here is take the um, is I want to extend all of this. To, you're, you're going to take finite dimensional M M phase space to um, M is equal to spaces space of solutions of a wave equation. equation. And so the, the, the first case would be the, um, um, the Schrodinger equation. And so you can ask if I take, yeah, so, and this is sometimes called second quantization. That if I take what I normally, what I normally thought of as, um, anyway, if, if, if I take the space of solution to the Schrodinger equation and don't think of those as wave functions, but think of that as the phase space, that whole space of these is the phase space. Then and, and then and then I quantize, and then 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 quantiza quantization quantization is, uh, is 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 quantum field theory. What used to be um, your, your your nice simple finite list of these Q and P basis vectors are now an infinite list of possible basis vectors of some function space. And so, so, but, but, so I was trying to, a lot of what I was doing in setting this up in the fall was setting this up so that it would work as nicely as possible when I tried to extend it to this case. But, but was, so that, that's a Schrodinger equation. And then maybe three, I guess, is to say that we're going to do this for, um, do this for relativistic field equations. And in particular, so for the Klein Gordon equation for scalar fields, the Dirac equation, equation, Maxwell's equations, and the, and the Yang Mills equation. So, in, in, in some sense, for, for each of these, each of these relativistic, so something that Put space and time together, and it's, you're going to have a different kind of symmetry or a relativistic symmetry. I'm going to put look at the space of solutions of these guys. They're going to be infinite dimensional spaces, but I'm going to treat them just by the same quantization methods I used here. If they if if they correspond to fermions, I'm going to use the fermionic quantization. If they're bosons, I'm going to use the bosonic quantization. And I'm going to have a and, and anyway, I'm going to and so so that and and and, and this gets you fairly close to. Understanding, you know, what the basic elements are that make up the, our kind of best understanding of the of the world in terms of the standard model. Um, the one thing that I've always the caveat about what's going on in this course is that I'm never going to tell you anything about how to. <laughs> I, I've only ever told you about these nice quadratic operators, which you which have these nice properties where you can exactly solve anything. Or from the point of view of quantum field theory, I, I'm I'm only telling you about um, free field theories. So I'm going to tell you about quantum field theory is where you've got non-interacting particles. And I'll, I'll say a bit about how, how you introduce interactions by coupling these guys to these guys, but I, I won't say anything at all about the really ugly story of, of how you actually start doing computations when you, when you do that. Okay, so that's, that's the plan for the, this, this semester pretty much. Any questions for today? Nope. Okay, anyway, then, as usual, I guess, let me cut this off now, and uh, you're, I'll, I'll be around for a while. You're free to come back on the other Zoom link, and we can talk, talk, talk some more, okay? And also, definitely let me know if um, it's better for you to, to talk, if you want to uh, meet sometime and talk about the class, other than um, 
after class, do let me know. I'm, I'm, I'm around and able to talk mo most times, especially Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm pretty much in the office all day. And it's easy to talk to me anytime. Okay, so goodbye for today. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.